Hello friends, myself Dr. Deepak and today we are going to learn about the anatomy of skin. So the skin it is also known as the cutis and the antigument. We have already discussed about the antigument system. Let me start studying with the introduction. Skin is a general covering of the entire external surface of the body including the external auditory meatus and the outer surface of the tympanic membrane. It is continuous with the mucous membrane in the all openings of the body as like in the mouth, in the anabrism. It is continuous with the mucous membrane of this area. Hair, nails, the sweat gland and the sebaceous glands are the appendages of the skin. Then the average surface area of the skin. So the average surface area is about 1.7 square meter. Now the skin, uh, pigments, pigments in the skin which are responsible for the color of the skin. So mainly these five pigments are responsible for the color of the skin. They are the melanin, the melanoid, the keratin, the hemoglobin and the oxyhemoglobin. Among them the melanin and the melanoid are for the dark color. Whereas the keratin it is for yellow to orange color. The hemoglobin it is for the purple color and the oxyhemoglobin it is the for red color. Then the thickness so about 0.5 to 10 millimeter of thickness in the different area of, uh, of the body the thickness is varies as like in the palm and the and in the sole area the thickness is about the 3 millimeter and as like in the lips it is the thinnest like the 0.5 millimeter then we will discuss about the layers of the skin so the skin has the main two layers first is the epidermis and the second one is the dermis so this epidermal area it is the ectodermal in origin whereas the dermis it is a mesodermal in origin the epidermis it is formed by the stratified stumous epithelium whereas the dermis it is formed by the connective tissue and it is raised on the subcutaneous tissue. So there are the five layers in the, of epidermis. The epidermis has a different five layers. From below to above, there are the stratum basali, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidium, and stratum corneum. So the stratum basali and the stratum spinosum they are combinedly also known as the germinating zone. Why? Because the stratum basali it is formed by the stem cells and which undergo into the mitosis and form the new cells which replaces the above layers. The cells produced are known as the keratinocytes. Then the stratum spinosum, so the formed keratinocytes are placed here in the stratum spinosum and these keratinocytes have a filaments and these filaments are known as a keratin filaments and that's why these cells are known as a keratinocytes then above the keratinocytes there is a stratum granulosum the cell of the stratum granulosum are contains the granules within them and these granules are due to the keratohyaline protein. Due to this keratohyaline protein, there is a presence of granular appearance in this stratum. Then above the stratum granulosum, there is a stratum lucidium. So in this stratum lucidium, the dead cell with the dispersed keratohyaline protein are present, means the cells of this granulosum and spinosum area are dead and they are placed here in the stratum lucidium. Then above the stratum lucidium there is a stratum corneum. The stratum corneum 
is formed by the dead cell, but these cells are surrounded by the lipids. This uh, stratum it is rich in the lipids, and that's why it provides a waterproof structure. This is a the dermis is further be formed by the two layer, the papillary layer, and the reticular layer. So here, this above structure it is a papillary layer. and after that there is a reticular layer so in this papillary layer you can see there are many more structures like there are the arteries the veins the ends of these vessels the lymphatics the nerve endings are present here then the sweat glands are also present here uh, the roots of the hair follicles they are have they are also present here there is one muscle which is, which is attached with these uh, hair follicles and which connect this hair follicles to the skin and these muscles are known as the erector pili muscles so these all structure are present in the papillary layer of the dermis which is formed by the dermal papilla and this dermal papilla are rich in the thick skin area like the palm and the sole area in the other part this papillary layer is thinner then after the papillary layer there is a reticular layer the reticular layer it is formed by the collagen fibers and the elastic fibers these elastic fibers are provide elasticity to the skin and during the old age these elastic fibers are become relaxed and that's, uh, that's why there is a wrinkles of the skin these elastic fibers and the collagen fibers are arranged in a stratum like means in a uh, particular direction and that's why they form the crease of the body in the body we can see there are the many more crease like in the hands these are the crease so these crease are known as a langers line they are known as a langers line and these lines are due to this reticular layer in the presence of the elastic fibers and the collagen fibers in the limbs these uh, uh, langers lines are a uh, vertical whereas in the uh, trunk area they are the horizontal in the fashion then the linea gravidarum gravidarum what is the linea gravidarum so when the skin is more stretched then there is a presence of the white lines like in the fatty persons you can see there are the uh, ruptured skin and the white lines are present so these are due to the uh, breakage of the elastic fibers the elastic fibers are break and these lines are formed so these are known as a linea gravidarum uh, and this can be seen in the fatty persons so now finally we will discuss about its clinical anatomy so in the clinical ana anatomy the most important part you must have to remember it is the rule of nine so what is the rule of nine the rule of nine it is used to estimate the area involved in the burns when there is a patient of a burn so how many area of skin is burned in this incident it is counted by this rule of nine so for that there is a the skin is divided in the percentage as like in the head and neck area this skin it is about the 9% each upper limb this skin it is about the 99% 9% 9% 9% 9% the front of the trunk it is a 18% the back of the trunk it is a 18% then each lower limb they are the 18 18% in the perineal area is 1% means if the person's front of trunk it is only this area is burns so there is a 18% involvement of the skin in the burn it is there like that okay so this rule of nine it is very much important for the clinical purpose so here the anatomy of skin is near about completed thank you thank you very much